Welcome back, everybody, to DND Blender. I am your humble DM, Tim, and today, once more, we have the full cast of characters. We have India as Mick the Mech. I'm Mick. We have James as Mendel. Howdy. We have Leash as Roosh. As Roosh! I said hello! There she is. <laughs> and we have Georgia as Nissa Nimnackle. Did I get that right? You did, yes. Yay, hooray. Uh, and... My cat with my hello. Sorry? I disturbed my cat with my hello. Well, that I tends think to... I might need to move my microphone closer. It tends to help, yes, yes. Uh, when we last left our intrepid group of adventurers, they had just finished cleaning out the Glitterhame uh, of the Forge of Fury and laying to rest the dwarven occupants, um, or ex-occupants of the Forge. Um, whilst on their journey, they came across a group of... Uh, Grot, who had uh, left the usual orc uh, groups in order to form their own colony within the Glitterhaim, uh, and left them without any uh, serious incidents whatsoever. And after that, they spent downtime in burying the dead. And that is where we left off. Uh, you guys have just been spending your time doing whatever it is that you wish to do, and the day is yours. What is it that you would like to do? Have we taken a long rest? Uh, yes, you would have oh, taken good. several long rests. That's oh, yeah, because I was really low. <laughs> <laughs> Sec, my dear. Give it up. There you go. Uh, yes, so the day is yours. You've had your rest. What is it that you all wish to do? Is my gun fixed? Uh, you haven't had a you haven't done a repair of it. If you would like to give it a go, you may. Yes, sure. I will help. All right, so you get advantage on this. Oh, good thing you have advantage because she rolled one for the first one. Roll again. <laughs> a four. I got a four on the second. Um, does it explode again? It doesn't explode again. It's still. It's like ah, oh, it's bits missing. Damn it! <laughs> you just sort of whack. Yeah, you know, got to got to add some more nails into it. So she just starts hammering nails into the into the metal. So <laughs> Uh, the gun is currently uh, in oh. inoperable. My uh, next one was twenty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yes, unfortunately, Mick, you will be uh, sand slugger for the time being. It's alright. I'll just punch everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so after the um, the burial rites of the dwarves and the uh, attempted repair of the gun. Uh, Nissa, are you doing anything while this is all going on? Um, I can't really think of anything that she'd be wanting to do aside from sleeping. Very good. Uh, Mendel? Uh, nothing real in particular. Probably not helping a whole lot with actual bur burying things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's fair enough. It's not my problem. Yeah. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Roosh, after your assistant burials, anything else you wish to do? Um, I want to go crick my nose around in that library on the far side, because apparently Mandel wasn't looking at the books properly. Okie dokie. Uh... Is there anything specific that you are looking for? Um, history of the forge, history of the dwarves that lived here. Mm -hmm. I want to sort of 
work out any secret forging styles they might have had or stuff like that. Um, kind of like raiding the library to bring back awesome information back home okay. to the dwarves that live there as well. Yep. Um, but not so much raiding it yet because I know we're going to come back, but we're like identifying what stuff I want to take with me. Yeah, no worries. Make an investigation check. Would require me to change screens. Right yes. here. <laughs> Uh, I need a d20. Mm-hmm. That's not a d20. That's a 19. 19. Plus, I think I have four mm-hmm. or six for my investigation. Let me check. Very good. Um, four. Search- 23. 23. All right. So you give this place a a very thorough cursory investigation. Um, Unfortunately, in terms of techniques, there really isn't anything there. This is primarily the the records room, if you will. So it has um, updated blueprints on uh, potential uh, expansions and ideas, but a lot of it is just... um, It's almost like mining records and how uh, productive the forge has been. And uh, it also has, like, sales, you know, sold 50 blades to such-and-such place delivery at this particular time. So it's a a lot of ledges, primarily. Ooh. does give us a very interesting insight into the, how the forge functioned and yes. the sort of things that they were making and who they were delivering them to. Is there any reference to our city? Uh, no, there is not. At least not with your um, your initial investigations. You weren't fortunate enough to, to come across it because there is a lot of stuff there. You need like a few days to go through it thoroughly. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing you did notice, however, is as it was very quiet within the library as you were doing uh, your searching, uh, this room here, which is a room that had been sealed off, looked like a looted weapons room. This one here. Oh, that's the wrong button. Where my spinny hand is. Yeah, I was tilting the screen instead of scrolling. <laughs> uh, this, yeah. yeah, you, uh, through, even through the walls, you've been hearing footsteps um, occasionally coming from this room. And that's one of the rooms Nissa sealed off? Uh, Nissa sealed off this room here. This is the room with the, the angry rug. And uh, I think Nissa did look into this room and saw something. I that didn't. Just... Sorry. Sorry. I didn't see all that one. That one was just. Uh, she just thought that was just the weapons area. Yeah, exactly. Like she looked into it and she didn't see anything of note, so she just closed the door because it, it looked pretty thoroughly looted. Um, the second or third time I hear footsteps, I will go and investigate. All right. Uh. Sticking your your head in in the room, you hear like the shuffling and heavy armored footfalls within the room, and you subtly open the door. And standing right in front of the door is a suit of armor, and it just sort of freezes in place. And you see part of like the chain mail and the underside is sort of like flows a little bit like it looks like it had been moving around on its own. You don't have to be scared. I'm not going to hurt you, Mr. Chain Mail Suit thing. No response. Um... Is it like got a, a plate, a, a breastplate yeah, it's it's like it's a it's like a full suit of uh, of plate mail. Okay, I will 
how tall is it? Is it dwarf size? It's dwarven size, yeah. Right, I will reach up and sort of knock, knock, knock on the breastplate. You hear coom, 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 coom. It echoes. It's hollow. Um, I close the door okay. and sit down in the corner and I won't move. I'll just sit there. Okay. okay. Uh, you wait about five minutes and suddenly you hear And it, just, it sort of moves past the door and then you, you hear it sort of fade further away. Uh, sorry, I didn't specify. I was sitting inside the room. Oh, inside the room. Sorry. Yes. Ah. At then... no point watching it from outside the room. <laughs> sorry, I thought you were sitting outside the room. So you're just sitting in the room? Okay, well then you hear nothing. Nothing happens. It just sits there. Stands there. It's obviously magical of some sort. You would assume, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like how Mendel's placed himself on the throne again. <laughs> um, I'll just say in Dwarvish, carry on. And um, I'll just continue sitting in the corner. I'll pro- I probably have a book in my hand, so I'll just go to read that and just wait and see what it does. Okay. So, you're keeping your, your eye on the suit, and then you go back to your reading. And then as you're looking down at the book, you hear... And it's sort of... Turn- like, are you facing it, or you, like is it facing you as you're st- sitting, or...? Um, I'd be giving the impression that I am not watching it mm-hmm. um so i would probably be at a 90 degree angle to it okay to it so if right. it's facing the door mm-hmm. um i'd be looking at the wall but the door is perpendicular to okay all right so as you're sitting there and like you look very intently into, into your book you hear that like the sound of something squeaking and then you, you see out of the corner of your eye, the foot slowly begin to raise up like it's trying to take a step. I just keep staring intently at the book and like, um, I, I want to have like just the faintest vision of what's going on out of the corner of my eye, but really pretending not to look at it. Okay. I don't so, want to get stood on, but yeah. I want it to think I'm not watching. Okay. So essentially, as you're, as you're just sitting there, it's just, it's, it, it, it just slowly begins to walk, and then it just slowly begins to almost sneak away. So it's it's here, and then I'll just use this orc to represent where it was. So it's it was here, right? And then yeah. it just very slowly just begins to creep its way into the corner, and then it goes around the corner, and then once it's completely yeah. out of your line of sight, yeah. it's it speeds up. You. <laughs> And then it just goes into the corner. Uh, um, I'll give it a couple of minutes to regain its uh, composure. This is what very good. So while um, while this game of uh, of hide and seek <laughs> is going on, cat and mouse hide and seek <laughs> is going on. Yes. Uh, what would everyone else like to be doing? I want to fix my gun. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've already been tinkering with your gun, Mick. We've already established that. Uh, Miss is just gonna sit in the corner and see if she has any rations left, and if she does, she's gonna pull out that sparkly fork and start eating them. Alright then. So it eats food. Mick gets annoyed at his gun and Mendel sits upon the throne. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do as well is I'm just going to be like grabbing little 
pebbles that are around, like fallen debris and rocks and stuff, mm -hmm. using um, my artificer thing, which lets me put like sounds or something oh, onto yeah, yeah. an object. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have the rock scream, and then I'm going to throw it to the other end of the room, and then I'm going to do it to the next rock. And just keep doing that, because I'm... Because <laughs> I'm bored waiting for us to go and do stuff. Yeah, and this is going to look up, uh, get a very exasperated look on her face, and then wander off into the, into the uh, temple room. Alright. Uh, I'll put Mick in the forge, because that's most likely where you would have been attempting to deal with the the gun the uh, other orcs have, haven't been seen uh, since you last saw them when they ran up to the um, the entryway to the forge they haven't come back from out no you haven't you haven't seen them since you returned uh so while you're sitting there and while this is all going on, you hear again, and then it gets to the it gets to the corner here, and it sees you, yep. and it just goes and just freezes. You know, what like mid mid step, and it just sort of it's just sort of looking in your direction. Yeah, and I'll continue apparently reading a book and paying it no mind. And then it will just slowly and just drop back behind the bit. Then you hear, and you see the head lean out from behind the the weapon rack. And then it slowly Scooby Doo's back into the corner. I think it is here. Just a large crumpling of metal. What on earth? Um, as that, I'll get up and sort of walk to the corner and peer down. Are you okay? And it just sort of, it's, it's just, uh, where, where you see it, it's now in a squat position, just sort of crossing its arms and looking annoyed. Like, it, it, you imagine like a, a sulking child. It's just like. <sighs> Do you want me to sit in the middle? Would you prefer that? No response. Uh. Yeah, I'll wander down to it. Mm -hmm. And I'll sort of pat it on the shoulder, motherly. Mm hmm. Ding, ding. Um, you don't have to be afraid of me. I'm a friend of the dwarves. And I'll speak in dwarvish again. Mm -hmm. um, do I still have the Lord's Medallion or whatever on me? Yeah, you do, Probably. yes. Yeah. And I'll pull it out and I'll show that to him. Right. It, looks it. At the it looks at the medallion. Like, you sort of see... It, when the medallion comes out, there's like a... The armor flexes in recognition. It's like... And then it just it just goes, and just it's still sit, it's still sitting there looking shy, but it's just like sort of tilts its head, like like a cat would just. With the squeaky armor sounds. Actually, I think if I was doing this, ah, I did. Look at me, I was actually prepared for this. <laughs> Um, I'll pat my pockets down as if I've forgotten something. Mm -hmm. Like, come with me. Let's get you oiled up because you sound really squeaky. Let's get you proper, proper looked after. And I'll um, hold out my hand as if I'm like inviting it to take a stroll. Okay. Um, it just sort of it looks uh, uh, again. It sort of just and it just sort of shies away, just sort of huddles itself in the corner. Um, almost, like it's, almost like it's going to sleep, like it doesn't really want to be moved. Right. Um, I'll leave. 
and I will go and find my tools and I will go and find my little oil pot. Yep. <laughs> and I will come back and perform maintenance on this poor suit of armor that's been left to molder. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, as you come back into the... Uh, oh, they've been playing. They've created a little tower here. So, as, as you come back into the, the main room on your way through to the forge, uh, you hear the sounds of screams in the sound of Doppler going from one end of the room to the other as you enter back into the... <laughs> What's going on? Passing the time. Hey, Mendel, you want something to do? Does it involve not being here? It involves your flamethrower. Well, I'm interested, but it also depends. Well, if I take the fork out of the lock in the other room, do you want a flamethrower that carpet? <laughs> Why on earth would I do that? Because <laughs> there's nothing else to do. I'm doing something. Yeah, As I hurl it the rock. It's going to get uh, ah! bumped on your head very soon. Oh, my, my, my mistake. Let me let me do, uh, change the uh, sound of that. And I change it to, like, the sound of nails down the chalkboard. <laughs> and then throw the next one. Uh, <laughs> and I just uh, uh, This is going to smack him in the face. <laughs> roll, an, roll an attack. Do you... <laughs> I doubt that hits, but it's a nine. No, no. So you go, basically, you you hit Mendel just uh, <laughs> like you just you don't really like you don't punch him enough to do damage. Like you just sort of slap him on the arm. Stop. Fine. Um, Mendel, do you much about <clears throat> do you know much about putting magic inside of inanimate objects? Well, as I put magic inside an inanimate object and throw it down the other end of the room, <laughs> maybe. Not like that. I mean, like, to make it alive. Nothing's really alive that's not alive already. Armor with personality? It's shy? What do you want me to do about it? Make it not enchanted? No. I was wondering if you knew how a person might do that sort of thing. So that maybe we can learn more about it. It's a long, drawn out, and expensive process. Hmm. Well, it's a bit rusty and creaky, so I'm going to do some maintenance on it. And then, how about we go downstairs to the vault? I was hoping you'd say that a couple of days ago. Look, I, ha I told you I have to do things in the proper order. You have to pay your respects to the people who once lived here. And then I was trying to find out if there was anything else about the vault in the library. And then I found walking armor. So, you know, these things. I'm going to quickly take care of this armor, and then we'll go downstairs. Uh... Okay. So, you... In the, main t in the, in the meantime, Mandel, I'll give you a puzzle to think about. My question is, firstly, why do I care? Because it's the way out. Back the way we came? No. Nope. Faster. Hmm. 
Well, at least to the surface. How can you do battle with a beast in a boiling bubble? Because that's what we have to do in order to get to wave. I'm sorry, what? One of the legendary weapons of this forge. In order to get to it, the Sphinx said we had to do battle with a beast in the boiling bubble. Sounds like we have to kill something. Yeah, but I don't know what beast lives in a boiling bubble. I thought maybe someone with your brains would know. I feel like if it's somewhere in a drawer in Stronghold, it's probably self-explanatory when we see it. <laughs> Fine. Continue throwing your screaming stones and I'm going to go oil a walking suit of armor. So Is you may... going to follow her because she doesn't want to be anywhere near the screaming stones. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you make your way, like well, you make your way into the forge room, and you see uh, Mick uh, with his uh, slugger on an anvil, and he's actually got a hammer, and he's just hitting it. So <laughs> why won't this work? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mick, what are you doing? Fixing the slugger. Um, are you sure that's fixing it? Yes, I am Mick the Mech. I know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, I get that. But <laughs> hammer. Yes. Yes. Um, it's a... He's onto something. And I pull out my hammer and I cast mending. <laughs> <laughs> Roll your dice. <laughs> Oh, just hope I don't get a one in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> here we go. Where is it? Right here. It's the invisible one. Five. Five. All right. So Mick has been like denting the absolute shit out of this thing, and you walk up and go, "You go, oh, he's onto something. Let me try." Ding! And as you you whack it, it it always goes. It actually completely straightens out and repairs. <laughs> See? <laughs> I know. <laughs> this is just gonna shake her head and, and uh, stare at the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll give Mick a good, I don't know, Thump in the thigh or something. Mm -hmm. This is kind of my height range. Yep. Good job, Nick. Um, next time it's that busted, let me know and I'll I'll come help you proper. It's Instead right. of just throwing you advice from a distance. <laughs> and if you need anything fixed, mix the mech is there to fix it. Good to know. <laughs> oh, um, you might want a bag for all of those. And I point to the corner where all of the ammunition that I've been crafting with my uh, Forge Cleric thing every day is piled up. Yeah, you see, there's this big pile of, <laughs> of bullets sitting in the in the corner there, Mick. You, you might want to grab a bag and like work on your... Uh, I don't know how you store them. The clips? Yeah. yeah I made you lots of uh, the bang things. Ooh, bang things. Thanks. Yeah, so Mick You're stomp, welcome. stomps over to the corner and just starts scooping them up and shoving <laughs> them into his pockets. His bullets just <laughs> falling everywhere. <laughs> Alright, let's go find some oil. Mm hmm. And a scrubber. Oh, yeah. So you would know that there'd be definite sponges and other bits and pieces still sitting in the kitchen, so you can get those there. Mm. And there's uh, oil for oiling up weapons uh, in this area here. So you are able to uh, procure those items with ease and you can make your way back to the armory. Uh, do you wish to join them, Mick? Or... Yeah. All right. So everyone... Well, I hope he's still there and hasn't walked off. It'll make you look like an absolute idiot. No, so when you get back, <laughs> as you're approaching the door, you're hearing... <laughs> and then as the door opens, you hear... You hear it stopping and you hear and it just goes back into the corner. Uh, what was that? 
It's the walking arbor, remember I told you? Uh, to be honest, I couldn't really hear anything over those rocks. Well, there's a very, very shy suit of armor in here. And I think it's been alone for a really, really long time. So I'm gonna go give it some tender love and care. Uh... Okay. Maybe, maybe like, you can be in the room, but maybe you don't, like, stare at it, because it gets very sh- I- It- Yeah. It's weird, but it's shy. Okay. Hey, Tim, did I actually see this the first time I went in there or not? Uh, you did, you saw something moving, but then you just closed the door. You didn't worry about actually investigating any further. Oh, that's right. I was trying you had to avoid any conversations. Of- yeah, you'd found a bunch of zombies and stuff earlier. So. Yeah, yeah. It's so like at the very, very back of the vision, you saw the movement of this thing that you didn't really. It's like, nope, not dealing with that. <laughs> and just close the door. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I had just been aged up ten years, and I wasn't looking for another fight. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. It's fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah. you got you aged ten uh, years and you became wiser and less impulsive. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'll go in and um, I guess it'll run and hide in its corner again. Yeah, it's still in its corner, and you see it. It just—it's just sort of crouched in there, and it's just—it—it's not really paying you any attention. As you approach and attempt to oil, it, it almost recoils from you. But you're able to get in there and you've got like your, your little oil can or whatever and you're able to apply it to the joints and give it give yeah. it some some maintenance uh, yeah yeah hold still gosh you're like a child that doesn't want to be bathed mm. yes. here's you see <laughs> look i can't make you nice and shiny if you don't hold still and it just sort of it puts its arms out straight and just let, lets you do whatever it is that you want to do. And so after... I'm going to buff the fuck out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so after, we'll say, like t- 10, 20 minutes or so of you working on, on this, um, uh, you have a very non-squeaky, uh, but still very clangy um, suit of armor that is just still to sort of crouched in the uh, in the corner <laughs> all right now we're going on an adventure down to the vault you're welcome to come with us or you can continue walking in circles around this room your choice but you're invited to come on an adventure and with that i will turn and let's go okay it just watches you leave and it, it stands up and it just sort of tilts its head slightly and then it uh it just begins to start walking and then it it gets to this corner here and then it it stops so as you guys are like uh out out the door just sort of waiting and then it gets it just sort of waits here and then it just begins to patrol back and forward you see you hear the stomping sounds but you don't hear the the squeaking exactly it looks yeah. It seems a bit happier, and it's, able, it's willing to move while you're watching it now, but it's now just patrolling the far end of the room. Well, I suppose it's an improvement. We, we will work on making friends. Let's go. Let's, let's go downstairs. As long as it's not, not like an evil there. spirit, that's fine. Or something? Uh, sorry, I'm just explaining this to... To Indy, because uh, he she knocked on the suit, it was hollow. Yeah, and with her uh, in- increased buffing, she would have noticed that you know, there's the uh, the under the under male actually gives when you push into it, like it actually sinks inward. So there's actually no, yeah, there is definitely no um, uh, solid body within. The suit of armor. So yes. There's no person in no there. No person in there, yes. No orc hiding. No. No. Two small orcs anyway. Yes. Alright. Uh you make it back into the 
the Great Hall. Alright, are you ready, Mandel? <sighs> what now? Yeah, now. You mean you're sure? You got nothing else to do? <laughs> do you want me to go find something else to do? You're gonna stop being a jerk and come with us. Well, I mean, I'm awfully busy, you see? Uh, got these here rocks. And... Well, of course I'm coming with you. Jeez. I don't mean well, waiting. Do you, want me to... do you want me to send you straight to the surface now? The hell am I going to the surface for? Well, you wanted to go. You don't have to come with us if you don't want to. I I'd, uh, I'd prefer he comes with us just in case we run into any more nasty things. Look, I'd prefer that too, but if he's really not happy, he doesn't have to come. When did I say this? Ever in character? Uh, you didn't so much say it, I'm reading your body language. <laughs> She's reading the room. Look, I have a way for you to get straight out if you don't want to come with us. That's all I'm saying. Take it or leave it. We're going to go downstairs now. You'll see it on our well, way out. Well, I've been waiting two days for you to say this. Alright, let's rock and roll. Rah. And I will head to the doorway. Okie dokie. So, everyone gathers themselves up and they head for... Uh, past the secret entrances. Um, as uh, Roosh comes into the room, you'll notice that the, the doors here have actually been replaced, or they've been um, not replaced, they've been closed. The two doors that uh, had the traps attached to them. Um, but as Roosh gets closer to the doors... Uh, you see a uh, glint of light actually coming from underneath where the doors are. And I'll go up and I'll open the doors. Okay. Uh, which one first? Um, I'll open the way up first. Okay. So she opens up the left door, and as she opens up the door, where the brick wall was is no longer there. There is now... Um, uh, a an open passageway and what you see in front of you is the bridge of death from the first level of the uh, the forge so if you want to leave all you have to do is go through here um, just let me know I'll come out and I'll let you out but we're going to go through the right hand door now and I'll open up that door and she opens that door and you see a spiral staircase heading down uh, with uh, lit torch sconces. Because we're going to the vault. Onwards! And down I go. Okay, Bruce is down. Um, I'm following along as well. Okay, Nissa goes. Yeah, I go. Mick goes. Uh, Mendel? Uh, I wait I wait half a moment. Okay. And I go out the other door. Alright. Goodbye! <laughs> Everyone makes their way down the spiral staircase. And... Pardon me. When you reach the bottom of the stairs, you see there is about a foot of water. And the walls are very uh, slick. It's very humid down here. It's actually a lot warmer as you've descended down. And off in the distance throughout the the corridors you hear an occasional whoosh, whoosh, the sound. Um, and yes, you all Is make it. A, a foot of water on the floor? Correct, yes. Uh, okay, so I'm basically up to my waist then. Yes, everyone's pretty deep in it at the moment, yes. I'm just going to walk forward confidently. 
to the place that I know. Mm, Kadoki. Um, so everyone comes down the stairs. Mick in uh, in the back, in the rear, I should say. And everyone makes their way forward down the corridor confidently with Roosh. Uh, as you get to this point here... One second... Alrighty. So this was what you had seen in your quick journey down here before, Roosh. This place here was where your friend was situated. Uh, but as you... Uh, just as you're going round the corner, from the back, the way you came, you all hear a... And then a splashing sound. And you see... A massive grot. Uh, tumbling down the stairs and then landing face first into the water and then quickly skittering out going ah! uh, one of well, a familiar creature to you all one of the creatures that you saw in the cave uh, before a grot has followed you down I was going to say I lost grot Depends on your definition. <laughs> What's lost? Why are you here? I heard things. Uh, like what? Like noises. Yeah, that was us. We're walking. You're noisy. Yeah, sorry. Uh, to be fair, it's them two that's noisy. Who's that? That's Nissa. Who's Nissa? That hey. one. Oh no, I point at Nissa. Which one? I point at Nissa. The one that's standing in front of you. What's a Nissa? I am. Exactly how tall is this grot? Uh, roughly your height. Three foot tall. There you go. So, Mr. Grot, what, what do you plan to do now? You found the noise. What next? I don't know. The grot can carry stuff. If you want to kind of come. Yeah the grot to get hurt either like we don't know what we're getting into now like this is as far as I've been what's down here um don't know not sure I think there's going to be some traps and I think there's going to be some probably some monsters and there's definitely puzzles and maybe, if we're lucky, some nice weapons. I don't know what puzzles are, but I punch things. And you see uh, in his, like, on both of his hands are some very ornate looking gauntlets. Where did you get them gauntlets? None of your business! You can't have them! We don't, don't want your gauntlets. They're just pretty looking. <laughs> They're mine! <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, you like punching things, right? Well, yes. Can you follow instructions? What are those? <laughs> Can you do as the boss says? What's boss? Well, you know, what the, you, you would know what a boss is. Yeah, it's the the biggest of the group, and you are <laughs> you are 
the boss of your tribe. So you definitely. I don't will. take orders. You do what I say. No, no, no. I'm the boss down here. <laughs> you're funny. If, if you're coming down here with us, then you need to follow what the boss says. So if I don't follow but walk this way as well, then I don't follow orders. Got it. And I just walk in front of her. <laughs> if you can your fault, not mine. Uh, and this has just walked off to look up the pathways. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we'll go up to the junction. Yeah. And apparently I've been followed. Yes, you have been followed with us. <laughs> Which way are you going? How the hell if I know? Well, oh. what about that way? Alright. So... Uh... Do, 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 do. Okay, so, uh, having been here before Roosh, you, um, remember seeing these different corridors. Uh, you notice that the water changed colour, um, on this side here and turned slightly green part way down, and then on this one here it turned black part way down, but you didn't bother to go any further than that. And then up here, at the very, uh, end there, the, uh, Path. It's a sharp left hand turn. Is the sharp left hand turn, exactly. Yeah. I have a um, quick question. Uh, yes. Um, did I give you that unidentified potion to identify or not? Uh, I think you did. Okay, because I'm just looking at my equipment and I've still got it in there as an unidentified potion, so I don't know if we identified it or not. Um, I have... The purple potion was a potion of flying. Okay. Cool, thanks. Uh, and there was a potion of healing. Amongst them too. Mm. Mm. Um, alright. So... And now that you're in this, this centre section, um, yeah. that sound of the... Whoosh, whoosh, um, is coming from where the green slime coloured thing is. What's that noise? Probably nothing good. Should we no. punch it? Hang on, hang on. You've got to listen. Not a good idea. You've got to listen. So, the Sphinx said that to rescue Wave, we have to do battle with the beast in the boiling bubble. So we got to go punch the bubble! <laughs> Two. So we gotta go this way, right? Soon. She said that Whelm, which was the one that we've heard about before, was across a cavern vast where chain links rattle, past water and spouts double. Stop speaking, stupid like! Speak plain! And the third one, Black Razor, yet remains to be one underneath inverted ziggurat. So, I guess those are clues for how each of the weapons are hidden. I uh, do you know what a ziggurat is? Yeah, a ziggurat, uh, say... Like it's a, like a big triangle temple thingy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pyramid with steps. Yeah, I know what it is, but Nissa doesn't. Right. It's a, it's a pyramid thingy. Um, it's like a temple. Ah, so if we come across a temple down here, then we know what it is. Yeah, but it's inverted, which means upside down. So it will be coming from the ceiling instead of from the ground. Okay. Sounds so like you don't know how to build things. We didn't build it. Um, so... We've got three passageways. Normally I'd say let's take the left one. But I kind of want to investigate what that noise is first. So maybe we should take the right one? I mean, the last time we investigated something that was pretty, it tried to eat us. But how do you know it's the right one? Could be the wrong one! 
You don't know till you try. See, did I load the dice? Uh, no, I did load the dice. It's cool. Just making sure. Um, I mean, shouldn't we try the pathway that doesn't have something in it first? Well, all the pathways Bye. have got stuff in them. But you're, you're looking at it; it's it's still just like you know, pools of water. It's all. It's still. Um, so, is there something in the one above, uh, straight ahead of us, or is there's still just... water that way as well? But not discolored. Uh, no. This is going to go halfway up just to see what if there's anything that's wrong with the water. All right. So, like down this way. Okay. Who's, who, whose hand is on my character? Because I can't see. Her. James, move your, move your hand. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So as you get to there, uh, you see there's a little alcove, and looking below into the water, uh, you see. Uh, an iron, uh, almost like a manhole cover. It's like a large circular iron disc. Does it look heavy? Uh, it's iron, and it's about nine times bigger than you are. So, what are we it's... walking this way for? It's underwater. Hey, Mick. Hey, Mick. Yeah. Come here a sec. This is going to hook the end of her grappling hook under the edge of it and to, and say, Hey Mick, can you pull this? No worries. Ah. We're going to try and what? open the You door. want to lift that thing? Well, I mean, it, might, it, might, it might get rid of the water if it's the drain. Yeah, because it, it, I mean, it's a big iron grate thing at the bottom of that and there's water here and I'm just thinking if we open it, that'd be good. Provided I'll walk up to it and try and open it. Alright, make a strength check. <laughs> Gotta find a D20 first. Yeah, there's a big pile of them over here. And it's gone. And it's gone. And it's back. There you go. <laughs> so, straight strength or do you want... Uh, athletics. No, just straight strength. You're hoiking it. Uh, 15. 15. So, you, you go... And, you, and to everyone's surprise, he actually manages to get it up. Like, he's actually managed to raise it up, but he's not able to completely lift it. He's just like... Aah! I will jump in and help finish the rest of the way. Alright. Your strength check, then? Uh, let me zoom back out. Bring that dice back. <laughs> Was that nine? Nine. Uh, ten. <laughs> All right. So, with the combined efforts of your incredibly small but quite strong little friend and um, Rusha's assistance, you both. Lift the whole thing up. The whole thing goes clang, clang, like he slams up against the wall, and then just goes down sideways. Ha! I did it. All right. Uh, make a uh, and the water begins to into the hole. Is it everyone to make a quick strength check as the flow begins to happen? Strength check uh -oh. twenty two. Twenty two. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> I got a four. A four. All right. What? Uh, so what's your total? Just four. Yeah, just four. Okay. Um, fifteen. Fifteen. To cast a spell. Yeah, you can roll a one. You can re-roll your ones though. Remember. Oh, I can't do because I'm lucky. Yes. Ah. Eleven. Eleven. All right. I'm still gonna cast a spell. <laughs> all right, you're all good. You see, um, Nissa, her feet get taken out from under her, and she starts to go. Uh, Grab. Down the. I'll drink. reach out to grab her. Okay. Uh, Dex, please. That's the roll button. Just straight decks? Yeah, straight deck. Just you know, you just go fifteen. Yeah, fifteen. Yeah, you'll find you. Also you're... fifteen. All right. Yeah. So the two of you, ah! you both grab grab hold of an arm and you stop her from being sucked down the drain. Thank you. See, that's a silly idea to go down there. Don't do that. Well, I wasn't doing it intentionally. Um, and you see, uh, quite quickly, in fact, all the water that is pulled up in this area, it begins to 
flow into this drain and after about two two to three minutes uh it is quite um lower it's now just around your ankles well i guess it was a good idea to come this way then and then while you're standing here uh you see the green water come sliding past you all and then as it gets to the drain it lashes out and attempts to attack you and then <laughs> disappears down the drain as well and you hear <laughs> are we glad we didn't go that way now yeah I've never seen green water attack people before well I did say the last thing that was watery like kind of tried to eat us yeah, the gelatinous cube in the room of disappointment. Uh, that's well, what you I'm... said. Yeah. Yeah. It, when you said it, it didn't like ting in my head at all. It just sounded like the last thing that we saw tried to kill us. I'm like, yeah, that's what zombies do. <laughs> <laughs> well, the cube looks this like makes water and it tries sense. to eat us. <laughs> no sense. I am awake. <laughs> all right. Um, so now the drain is open. I'm wondering whether we close it to try and keep the green water down there, or if we leave it up to make sure the water doesn't build up anymore. I mean, it didn't take that long for the place to drain, so we yeah, could always we put it back, back and open it again. Yeah, but if we put it back on and just wait for a bit and see how long it takes to, if it, you know, fills up fast or slow, because if it fills up slow, then we can leave it for a while. I pick the thing up again and try to put it back on. Nah, right, another strength check. Uh, Nissa pulls her grappling hook out of the way very quickly. Uh, not, uh, 11 this time. Yeah, yeah, because you're using gravity. That's all you needed. So yeah, he literally just leaps up, just goes, and just two hands and just slams it back down to cling. If you're trying to speak, Leash, we can't hear you. I said, eh, I guess we're closing it. Well, I don't think we had a choice. I think whenever this one sets it their mind or something, it happens. <laughs> you Are said you close okay? it, so I closed it. Um, I suggested we perhaps possibly close it, not that you should close it straight away. What's the difference? We were still discussing. Well, yes, of course I've got a name. What's your name? Who wants to know? I do. Uh, yeah, pretty much all of us at this point. Oh, it, okay. It feels rude calling you Grot constantly. It's like saying dwarf or human or... or I, I mean, human, I mean or, Grot um, is kind of orc for servant, so unless you want to us to keep calling you servant... What, do you want me to call you Grot? I mean, I can if you want. What's your name? I'm Roosh. My name is Roosh. Is that like a Nissa? Yes, I'm Nissa. My name is Nissa. And what's that? Pointing My at the bigger name. one. Oh, They're that's pointing Mick. At Mick. I'm Mick the Mick. You're Mac the Mick! Got it! I'm Rex! Nissa is just glaring at Rex at this point. <laughs> nice to meet you, Rex. Um, let's go down the right, the one on that side. Where the slime, no to, where the the slime was. Slime side. Yeah. Is right. that the wrong side? Uh, yeah, Nissa stalks off we'll away from out, won't we? <laughs> all right. So you all. Do you all go? Yeah. All right. Cool. So, uh, you all make your way down the corridor, and where the discolored water was, it is no longer there. But you see the tiles on the ground where it was sitting are. Uh, even smoother than what the other ro uh, other rocks were. It's almost looked like it's been acid washed 
and smooth and, and corroded <laughs> over time. So good work on pulling the plug on that one. Um, and you make your way this to... This just looks smug, by the way. <laughs> and you make your way to the end of... Or the end-ish of the corridor. Uh, to this junction point. Scroll, scroll, uh, scroll. And you see, uh, at this point, another corridor. And th this section of it is, like, completely dry. Um, it looks like there's, like, a slight incline. Everything sort of has a down gradient towards where that that drain was. And pulling it off has uh, cleaned out any of the... Um, the water. But you do notice that there doesn't appear to, be, appear to be any leaks, but you assume because of the humidity on the walls, it's actually just the condensation that's built up over the years that's that pot where all that water came from. Uh, well, it means the water's I... not going to come back quick. Hmm. Yeah. Alright. Uh, so you have this corridor, you have uh, a path to the end, which... Uh, goes right and one that goes left continue the trajectory that we have solid followed so far so right again yes all right so you get to this bit here this nissa you see the corridor um heads up and ends in uh, a doorway which way are we going that way and i point to the right <laughs> all right so you get to the end of the corridor here and the corridor leads off again and has another door at the end of the path start at this side and work our way around all right we're going clockwise or anti-clockwise i'm having a moment going right clockwise yeah all right uh you approach the door um, it is a very nicely carved uh, stone door, and it has nine uh, circles carved into it. Ooh. And it has a simple handle on it, like a, a ring-based door handle. This looks fancy. Um... I would like to examine the door okay. for any lock holes or key, key holes, not lock holes. Oh, lock holes, um, yeah. Key holes and or traps and or yeah. whether make, or not I can simply just push it open. Make an investigation check. <laughs> Seven. Seven. Uh, you do not find any traps, but it does not appear to be locked. I would like to open said door. All right. You turn the handle, and you hear click, click, click. You actually hear three clicks, and the door yeah. swings uh, outwards towards you. I'd like to look inside. Uh, Ooh. In inside. Mr. Cast Detect Magic. All right. One second. Prepare to be blinded. Uh, mm -hmm. du -du 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 -du. All right. In this room, suspended from the ceiling uh, by wire, are nine silvered glass spheres, each about two feet in diameter. Uh, each of them has uh, a different color. Um, from what you can see. Uh, the room is uh, incredibly well lit and all of the light, uh, all, all of the uh, globes are giving off their own different colored light. So the room is almost like a disco type mm. color effect. Um, and each of them uh, from the immediate vicinity is completely opaque. You uh, cast off your, your magic. Um, you do not, like, you get the, the basic glow of magic. It looks like it's, um, each of these spheres has been, um, hit with a light spell. That's why they're giving off, uh, the light. 
Um, but that is all you are able to discern. Well, there doesn't seem to be anything suspicious in there. It's really pretty. And I want to, like, have a walk around and examine all of the globes and look at them. Okay. Uh, you see them, they're all um, suspended just above your head height. So Mick would be running into them if he uh, entered the room. I'll enter the room uh. and I'll crouch. So Mick enters in and crouches his way in. He stands in. I wonder what they're for. Maybe they're for smashing. Uh, let's Too what? pretty. I mean, I can only detect light spells in here, but I don't think smashing them would be a good idea at the moment, because we don't really know their purpose. Can I do an investigation? Sorry. If you want to investigate them, sure. How will you be investigating? Oh my goodness. Sorry? I'm going to be looking at the alarm. Okay, so you, Mick gets up very close to investigate these things. To your orc eye, see Mick. <laughs> I rolled a one. Uh, Mick doesn't see much, he rolled a one. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, these are definitely spheres of light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is going to take a close look at one without touching check. it. Son of a... That was on 17 and it rolled over to a 6. <laughs> so what's your total? <laughs> uh, investigation, was it? Yeah. 8. 8. Um, again, you don't glean much from what you already know, but you're like, you... You, oh, you, you didn't touch it, did you? You didn't want to touch it? No. Okay. So, um, you get up on your on your tiptoes and you look and you actually see there, it's... Uh, the wire is actually... Like, it's not hooked on or anything like that. Like, it's not like a Christmas ornament. The wire is actually part of it. So there's actually no way to get it off the wire. All right, well, this is just going to step back. She's not going to touch anything. Okay. Because she's smarter than Nuru. <laughs> uh, Roosh, do you wish to do anything else? Uh, let's go look at the other corridor. and We know what this room has in it now, so we can come back here if we need to. Okay. And I will lead the way out. All right. So as you turn to go out... One second. Uh, Rex, the door flings back towards you uh, hard. Do you wish to try and catch it, or do you wish to just dodge out of the way? Uh, yeah, I don't want to like be slammed by that thing. So he's going to jump out of the way. No, no, no I'm going to like. Are oh, you going to grab the door back? Okay, so yeah, so make make a make a strength check. I had a moment. I put my needle down and then I couldn't find it. <laughs> Straight strength is 11. 11. So you put your hands on the door and like you catch it with both with both your hands, but the door actually pushes you into the room and then you hear click, click, click. And the door locks. Well, that's not good. Is there anything on the, on this side of the door? Uh, there's no handle, but there is a keyhole. What? Why did 
door shut. I don't know. Um, Rex, was, was that cut the door? Yeah. Wasn't there coloured circles on the other side of the door? There were just nine circles. They weren't coloured. It just basically showed you what was in this room. So, the pattern of the way that the uh, the nine circles on the door, they're pretty much identical to the layout of this room. Why do I get a feeling that this is a puzzle? Didn't I say there would be puzzles? Yeah, you did, and I, I have a feeling this is one of them. Punch the door. Ah, make a strength. Uh, make an attack. Uh, Rex, if this is a puzzle, I doubt that'll work. What do you think the puzzle is, is that? Uh, honestly, I don't know, but considering there were circles on the door, I suspect it's some kind 14. of lock. Fourteen. Uh, you maybe a sequence lock or something. You hit the door, but as your fist impacts into the door, it uh, it actually ripples. Like your your hand almost falls just shy of where the door would be, and there's like a ripple of energy out from the door. Uh, since my spell should still be in effect, yes, you, do you I are, detect any magic from that? You are detecting magic, yeah, coming from the door now, yes. Yeah, Rex, that's not going to work. It's uh, some kind of I magical do it again. barrier. Right. What about magical barrier? Do you not 20, understand? 21. 21. <laughs> again, ripple. It's a grunt. Um... Did any of us actually touch any of the orbs? No. No. I now try to push the door open. No. Strength check. <laughs> yes. You're down. Your, your feet are just sliding, and you've got both hands pushing on the door. Just... <laughs> Um, I am going to stand under the middle one. Middle one, sure. And I'm going to reach up and I'm going to tap it gently. Okay, you tap it goes, you, you, you tap it goes, ding, and it just swings very gently. And touching it, it uh, it makes the sound of. Uh, crystal glass. Huh. Nick. Yeah? Have you ever, like, line falls up in a row? Have you ever played marbles? No. Hmm. It was a game that we used to play when we were kids, and you would try and bounce small polished glass balls into each other and then try and hit another one. What's a kid? I was a child, a young orc. I get you grow from mushrooms, I guess, so it's the, the, the not mushroom part for, for people who don't grow from mushrooms. Yeah, you would recognize that as a snot. A snot. Sure. Um, what I'm thinking is do you reckon if we push that one, and I point to the, the black one at the back, if we push that hard enough, whether it would bounce into the one in the middle, which would bounce into the one at the front, which would bounce into the door and knock the door out? And play marbles. Only I'm not tall enough to push it. Would you mind pushing it? <laughs> 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 Why don't you just say that? I push it. All right. So which one are you pushing? The, that one, the black one at the back. All right, all right. Needs so. to be pushed hard enough to do like a marble effect all to right. try and hit that so, one in the front to the door. Mick walks up to this one here and just give me a strength check, Mick. Okay. He's going to push it with all of his might. Let's see how much might he 
we have today. Yes, exactly. It'd be nine. Nine plus a strength bonus. Is oh, four. It already, a four plus nine. Oh, okay, right, cool. So, Mick doesn't use the greatest amount of... uh, He sort of goes... Swings it forward, and you see the sphere. It swings on the chain, and it completely misses the other globe. And then it swings back and hits the wall, and it shatters. (gasps) And falling from it is a small uh, silver ring and a key. Drops to the ground. Ding, 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 ding. Oh! What was that? And I'll pick up the key and the ring. Okay. And I'll go to the door. Um. All right. So as you touch the ring, of course, <laughs> you hear in your head. Actually, no. You hear actually a loud a voice. Every, all of you hear this. Stop. Before you put me on, I confer the following powers upon my wearer. Invisibility, haste, immunity to charms, fly once per day, detect magic, and one wish. I also provide the benefits of protection and spell turning. The only drawback is that once a year, I I permanently eat part of your life. I must be warned before I can leave this room. Merely carrying me is not possible. If ever I am removed from my wearer's finger, however, all my powers are lost. You must decide right now who will wear me forever. I will punch it! What is it? Um, did we all hear that? Or Everyone just heard that, yeah. Um, this is gonna back to the other end of the room. I'm going to put the ring back on the ground. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the door with the key. Okay. Uh, and I'll see if the key fits in the lock. You walk up with the key and you insert it into the lock. It fits perfectly. Does it unlock the door? Okay. You turn it, and the door swings. What are the odds that that would happen on the first sphere? That's uh, one in eight. So, oh, sorry, one in nine. Missa <laughs> 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 realizes that the second it comes out. <laughs> um, did you look uh... at my character description, Tim? Oh, your description. I wasn't sure what you were talking about. Oh, cool. Worked. Yes. Well, that was weird. Um, kind of want to talk to the dude, but I don't want to wear the dude. Uh, Nissa storms out of the room. All right. Nissa's out of the room. Yeah, I'm going to do the same because I don't like that door now. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pocket the key and leave the room. Okay. So you're pocketing the ring. The key. Oh, the key. Sorry, I misheard you. Right, you pocket the key. The ring, okay. the ring is on the floor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it can stay there. Very well. Mick? Uh, I'll pick up the ring. Okay. You're going to put the ring on? All right. Mick puts the ring on. <laughs> <laughs> And walks out of the room. And you, Mick, you hear in your head, Good. And off you go. <laughs> okay. Everyone's out of the room. We learnt from our ring picker up ring already. <laughs> All right. Uh, and this is just waiting at the next junction for everyone, but she has a scowl on her face at this point. Right, yeah. Cool. All so right. Everyone makes their uh, way to. Let's try this hallway. Right. You make your way to the door at the end of this corridor. And what's on this door? Uh, this door has, uh, a image of five, um, humanoid figures with numbers on them. Ha. Uh, one second. 
I'm gonna pull out my notebook and do a quick sketch. <laughs> because we have worked this place has puzzles, and we need to have keys to them. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, where's my phone? Okay. So, yeah. So oh. What? Oh. What? What if, Nissa? what if we took that ring and we put it on the armor upstairs? Why would you want to do that? And then uh, Mick, and you see Mick, he's got the shiny ring on his finger. And I think it might be too late. Ah, uh, dang. Mick? Yes. What did you do? What do you mean? Speak up. He put the ring on. That's okay. It's his choice. Closer. You heard? Close, 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 close. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and mix it. What you mean? Why are you wearing the ring? It's shiny. This is going to storm it's through his the door. Own. Sorry, what was that? You guys over talked over each other. This is storming through the door. Okay. Uh, you grab the handle, the door uh, clicks three times, and it opens and allows you entry. And standing... Well, I'm glad for that, because I just lost my character in the black. You did. You did. Um... All right. Oil, hail the black. So as, I'm just going to do that so you can see the entirety of the room. As you step into the room, uh, Nyssa, you hear all, fi uh, all five of these creatures, their mouths open. And it says, one of us does not belong with the others. If you can, if you can pick us out, it will serve you. The others will allow you passage. If you pick the wrong one, we will kill you. You have 60 seconds. Um, <laughs> now, to, to describe the, this for you, um, they're clustered against the wall. Each of them has a number on their chest, the same numbers that were on the doors. Uh, the numbers are 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13. And your time has begun. <laughs> Nine. I know the answer. Nine. Are you in the room with me? Nope. Am I, did the door shut behind me or not? Uh, no, I didn't shut behind you. So we yeah, all heard it... that? Uh, you would have heard, you heard part of that, so yes. Help! What? Help! What? We've, we've got less than a minute! Less than a What's minute? What's a minute? What? What, what? what number doesn't fit? What do you mean, what number? What's a number? Fit? Get in here, quick! Oh, why? <laughs> I'm busy drawing the pictures on the door. 14, They're me. 13, 12, 11, 10, uh, uh, nine, comes screeching eight, out the door. 7, 6, 5, oh, what, well, what are you doing? 13. <laughs> Where are you going? Alright. Uh, <laughs> what, Nissa, what are you, what's going on? <laughs> Everyone, <laughs> roll for initiative. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, this is gone. <laughs> Answer was definitely nine there. <laughs> yeah, I said nine like four times. Yeah. It is not book. the right time for my brain to be doing math now. <laughs> it's the only one that you can divide. The rest are prime numbers. There you go. Two. Two. One second, I'm just gonna move all the dice to... I, I haven't done math for over a decade, excuse me if I get that wrong. Alright. Cool. So, Rex, you go first, and you see these creatures begin to uh, take steps forward. Uh, where's the playlist here? Alright. Uh, what do you wish to do, Rex? 
look very confused at what this thing's running away from. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just look at the things in front of me. Okay. What are they? Uh, they are very tall humanoid creatures that appear to be stitched together with other bits of humanoid creatures. God dang dwarves. Yeah, so I'm really not paying much attention. I don't care about them at the moment. Okay. Uh, Roosh, you're up then. I'm gonna shake my head at Nyssa and her insanity and continue scribbling in my book because apparently there's a puzzle here that I need to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh... <laughs> I just realised how far away I made it. I know, you are, you are way too far away. You wouldn't be, you'd probably be like, you probably would have made maybe 60 feet of movement by the time this happened. If you were doing full dash, because when you started to run, you had 13 seconds left. So you would have it would have been two turns. So if you were doing full dash, you'd be 120. I don't think I was full dash, but I would have been booking it. So I think to the back to the junction is probably the better, best right. place. It was mostly just trying to get out of range. Mm-hmm. Oh, Out of range of what? <laughs> <laughs> we need to work on communication, there, guys. <laughs> well, if you hover over my character for a second, you might understand why. Ah, uh, that requires zooming out and moving my camera. All right, so one, two, three, four, five. Do I know what they are? You would not recognize these at all. No, I mean, let me just double check something here. Um... They're ugly, is what they are. Yeah, they are ugly. They're ugly. Right, that was cool. <laughs> Your mama says, You ugly, you ugly. So they all just begin to slowly walk down the corridor, shambling their way towards you all. Uh, Missa. Oh, is it my turn already? Yeah, yeah. Oh. What is the range of Misty Step level 2? I don't know. Same Misty Step, step like, it's the one. same. Yeah, it doesn't it's the same change as level what's the, Yeah, but what's the range? Like 30 feet. Oh, this is going to use her movement, uh, which in the first go is 35, because it's her first. And shoot a couple of arrows. Okay, fire away. That's a myth. What'd you roll? I rolled a three. Plus? Uh, well, six, but... That's a hit. Nine. Oh, okay. Well, the first one's a hit, and then the second's a hit as well, then. <laughs> they're, not, they're not difficult to hit. They don't have natural armor. No. <laughs> Almost like they're slow. Mm. That's a total of 15. 15, and this is just basic, isn't it? It's not magical. Uh, no, not magical. Alright, cool. So that was both arrows, or just the first arrow? It was both. Okay. So you see the arrows go <laughs> and stick into the into the creature. It doesn't appear to react at all. Just the two arrows just sort of stick into its body. Uh, anything else? Is there a particular order they're coming in with the numbers or not? Uh, basically the order that you saw them in. 
So the one the one closest to you it, uh, would have been number five. Okay. That's uh, my turn. Okay. Uh, Mick, you're up. Um, I'm a bit confused what they are, so I'm just going to throw grease at them. Okay. Mick puts grease on the ground. How big is that? Ten foot, and anyone who goes in into it. So is it, is it is it ten feet radius or ten feet diameter? Um, center to the point within range. Alright. So it's going to cover that area. Okay. So Mick throw uh, pulls out a uh, a can of oil and <laughs> squirts grease out all over the ground. Makes a mess of Makes this dwarven mess. stone. Mm-hmm. Uh, you gonna clean that up? <laughs> uh, dexterity saving throw or full prone. All right. So first one. Uh, it's a nine, sixteen, and a one. So I think two of them are down. Yeah. So uh, this one is prone, and that one is prone, but this one stands up. Remains standing. Okay, so you see two of them just go and just fall to the ground. Uh, is that it, Mick? Uh, I have another attack. No, no, that's, that's your action. Do you have a bonus action you want to do? Um, Let's just say no. no. Let's, move, let's move on. Uh, Rex, your uh, orc companion has just sprayed grease all over, and two of these things have fallen over, and one of the others has fired arrows into these creatures as well. What do you wish to do? Who was taking that somewhat fast? Sorry. Battle axe. Very good. And this one in front of me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to do. Hang on, where is it? I'm going to use Great Weapon Master. Yep. What's that pencil doing there? That's mine, sorry. Oh. Uh, 16 plus 2? Mm-hmm. 18? Yep. Yeah. We've established that 9 hits them, so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> where's a D. That's a D10. You need a D12? So four plus four is eight plus ten is eighteen. Yeah, eighteen mm -hmm. uh, points of uh, non-magical non-magical slashing. slashing. Cool. So your your axe sinks into this creature, like, and you see it, it literally separates its shoulder as it's on the ground. It goes as it's laying upon the ground. Uh, then I do that again. All right. You get advantage too because it is prone. Yeah, I just rolled. Oh, okay, cool. Just making sure. Yeah. Uh, oh, one more point in. Never mind. That would have been nice. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's definitely going to hit. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Great Weapon Master again. It was uh, plus four, so f fifteen points of non-magical slash. All right, worries. Thank you. <laughs> you actually managed to uh, to cleave uh, the arm off of this creature. And just, uh, yeah. And so they like, go, yeah. All right. Uh, that it? Uh, yeah, I think so. All right. Roosh, you're up. Oh, we're hitting these things, are we? Why are we hitting them? Um, 
Smash! So it seems. Um... Uh, I will zoom in a little bit, please. Zoom in. Thank you. Step up and poke the prone one with mm -hmm. my sword. With your sword. Uh, many hits. Many hits. Many hits. All of the hits. Um. It's a D8. Is that a D8? Yes, that is a D8. Right. I need a D10. Well, that's why I brought all the dice over into that little section there, but someone moved them back. Yeah, that was me because I couldn't see what was happening. Ah. D10. Uh, one. One. Plus two. Three. Magical piercing. Magical slashing. All right. Uh, one second. Sorry. Ugh. Oh, crap. Where'd it go? Ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> you put a thing down, then you forget where your thing is. Uh, so how much was that again, sorry? Three magical slashing. Three magical slashing. Lovely. Alrighty. Um, it does not like that at all. Alright, it's now their turn. Uh, now with Grease, they've got to make a check to stand back up, don't they? Um, uh, no, they no. make it. Uh, so, uh, Greece is at the end of their turn. Okay, and um. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, hang on. Because um, I know Web. I think it's Web. Yeah, yeah. Start of the Greece turn and Greece is. When Greece appears, a creature that enters the area or ends its turn must. Okay, so it stands up without, without hassle. Uh, so it'll. This one will take a step forward. It's These two. Difficult terrain. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. And when they enter in it, they need to take. Yeah, this one here will, uh, do its check to see if it. Goes on its ass. Uh, nope, it manages to to hold itself. Uh, this one here, the one that you had hacked the arm off, uh, as it stands up, it, it literally picks its arm up off the ground and just goes and just fits it back into itself, and you see the flesh re knit, and then it will swing at you, Rex. Uh, that's a 23 to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. Okay. Oop, hang on. Uh, nine points of bludgeoning damage. And this one yep. here will do the same to uh, Nissa. Uh, 24 Roosh. hits. Roosh, sorry. 24 hits. Nissa's not there. Yeah, sorry. Uh, 16 uh, bludgeoning damage. And that is all they are able to do. Let's see if they fall on their asses. First one, no. Second one, yes. Third one, yes. Fourth one, yes. So everyone except. <laughs> it's like, it's like oh. <laughs> it goes, whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> everyone except the one that you guys beat the living snot out of earlier on. Okay, um, Nissa, you're up. Did you just get my text? Uh oh, no, hang on, let me double check. Secret messages. Um, I've got to remember too that I can um, re-roll my damage. Okay. You're a savage attacker, are you? 
No. No? What's the feat that gives you that? You said it's a feat. Oh. Right, okay, I'm with you now. My D&D understanding? Spike growth. Ooh, all right, spike growth. Uh, so your allies are taking that as well. Yeah. Okay. So you, you let us, you let them know what what it does. It says the ground in a twenty foot radius centered on a point within range twists and sprouts hard spikes and thorns. The area becomes difficult terrain for the duration. When a creature moves into or within the area, it takes two d four piercing damage for every five feet it travels. Uh, it's Sorry, camouflage don't move. to look natural. Yeah, don't move. Uh, it's camouflage to look natural. Any creature that can't see the area when it's cast has to do a wisdom check. Um, yeah, yeah everyone it... knows that it's there. Alright, cool. So we have greasy spikes everywhere. So, I mean, you can move. Uh, it would prompt <laughs> them to move, but <laughs> that's up to you. <laughs> Alright. Um... Mick. Um, and this oh. is still scowling. Okay. Mick. I'll just shoot my slugger. Alright. No, you got oh. the wrong one. You gotta do it in actions. No, you push the plus. The attack button. That's the, the damage. Oh, push this one. There you go. Right, so you hit with your slugger first shot, and you do twelve points of damage. Are you are you attacking the the one that's standing or the one? That, I yeah. think I'd go for the one that was standing. Cool. Yeah. No worries. That's twelve. All right. So first shot. Second shot. Yeah, that hits for all your damage. Mm -hmm. Only eight damage on that one. I roll another d12. Roll another two d12 because it, it isn't incorporated into the thing. Oh. No, 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 not there. Just here with this. Yeah. The d10, so. Oh, that's not good. Uh, alright, cool. I got it. Yeah, I got it. It's fine. All right, so Mick Mick unleashes his slugger into the standing one and does a significant amount of damage to it. Um, and back to the top, Rex. Uh, Smack. <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to attack with get fury. Cat now. With fury, you say? It will hurt me later. Uh, but that's going to be with a plus two, what, 19 to hit with great weapon. So five plus four is nine plus ten is 19 mm -hmm. points of non-magical slashing. 19, you said? Yeah. Cool. And the same with the Weapon Master again. Uh, 13. Mm hmm. No. Uh, so, 10, 20 points of non magical slashing. Nice. So, you go, basically, you go whoop, whoop with your with your axe, and you actually lob off both of its feet at, at its ankles, and it falls down onto its knees, just staring straight at you. But as you're lopping off these sections to it, like there's no blood, like the body parts are coming off, but you, it's, this creatures, these creatures are not bleeding in any way, shape, or form. Um, that's it for you? Uh, yeah. Alright, Roosh, you're up. Can I please get constitution saving throws from the two in front of us? I can do so. Uh, 
19 on the dice and a 8 on the dice. Making a grand uh. total of 12 and 23. Uh, 12 doesn't pass. Okie dokie. Yes, cat. I will pat you in a second. <laughs> Uh, three radiant damage, the one that didn't pass. Okie dokie. So he takes... Nothing for the one that passed. Very good. So the one directly in front of you takes three radiant damage. You can see its flesh begin to burn away where the radiant damage uh, ah, affected. I thought so. I thought so. Anything uh. that can stitch itself together like that dies to radiant damage. <laughs> You're just a fancy zombie. Uh, okie dokie. The one on its knees will continue to attack. What do you want? I want It'll it. have advantage this time. Oh, right, Please is that the... baby cuddles. Alright, cool. So, first one... Your brother took Not your that sick it That is... <laughs> Shit. Uh, alright, so it does 16 for the crit. Uh, so 26 damage for the hit. 26 halved, got it. Yeah, just letting you know, it's 26. Uh, and then this guy will stand his ass up and uh, attack Roosh uh, for 18. That's not going to be enough, is it? No. Nope. no. All right, and let's see if they manage to keep themselves butt out of my face. standing. No, nope, that one falls on its ass. That one falls on its ass. The other two at the back. Uh, it stands up. Cool. And the next one. All right. Cool. So this one is standing up, and the other ones. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> All right. Uh, Nissa, you're up. Uh, Nissa's just gonna stand back. Okay. And she's okay. still scowling. No worries. Mick? Um, I'll shoot my slugger. Right, which one are you going to attack? Well, the, these ones in front, they're... Because prone is disadvantage on ranged attacks, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So you'll have disadvantage if you attack the ones that have fallen over, but the one that's standing I'll up the back. Stand. Alright, so roll, make your attack. In action. So I'm going to attack your button. Yep, so that is definitely a hit. All your damage. Lovely. And second attack. And it's a hit. Ooh, jeez, rolled two 12s on her D12s for her, oh. her damage. Plus she gets two additional D12s. We haven't done that bit yet. Alright, so 18 plus... For 22 points of damage to this guy. Jeepers. Out of two shots. Nice. And I believe I can cast, like, um, like ra extra radiant damage as a bonus action on my equipment. I've got something here. Really? Um, branding smite. It says it's bonus Oh, okay, so you've got branding smite next time you hit a creature with a weapon attack before the spell. Oh, you've got, to, you've got to cast the spell as a bonus action first. Oh, I didn't... That's right, but I'll let, I'll let you do that now. So just roll your 2d6. No, no, it's just it's just damage. It's two dice, and that one again. Cool. So, um, Mick, as he powers up his his gun, goes through the power of the war. And as he fires the shot, <laughs> his gun, the bullets that come out of his gun are glowing, uh, almost like they've uh, like a tracer round as they impact this creature, and they do even more damage upon impact. Nice. Okay. Uh, Rex, you're up. Smash! <laughs> uh, well, with plus two is 16 to hit. Yeah, yeah. Uh... So 2 plus 4 is six, 16, and I forgot that while doing one thing I get to add another plus 2 because I'm doing a thing. No, just let me know what the numbers are. So 2, 4, no, sorry, 2, 4, 
eight, 18 points of non magical slicing so up the front, one in front of me. Yep. And then I do it again if it's still wriggling. It's still wriggling. Like you're lobbing bits off of it, but it, it looks like you're not hurting it in the way that you would expect to. Like That's alright, I'm just like going at it. No, no, you're just going berserk. Yeah, I get it. Uh, so. Uh, 7 plus 4 is 11, 13, uh, 23 points of no magical slashing. Nice. I want to chop it into as many little bits. Yeah, it's like a lob, lob, lob. <laughs> so it's now, it's now a torso. You're now grey, uh, black knighting it. I'll bite your legs off! It still has its, it still has its, it still has its upper torso. It's still coming at you, but, uh, it's now at, uh, eye height to you now. Uh, Roosh, you're up. Um. Oh my goodness. I'm going to sort of lean to my left and grab the butt end of the battle axe as it swings backwards mm -hmm. and cast Elemental Weapon okay. on it. So it's now a magic weapon with plus one and deals 1d4 fire damage. Oh, so you're enhancing uh, Rex's weapon. Yes. Cool. Because I can see him chopping things to bits, and I'm watching them all grow back. Yes. And I know radiant damage is a type of fire, so he can have fire. Okay. Um, so that's a third level spell slot. And that's an action... What do I have for bonus actions? How broken are you, Rex? Uh, if you were to look at me, I would be going nuts. How much blood is pouring out of you is probably the better question. Not a, not a lot. Alright. Okay. Um, Surprisingly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That will be that. Alright. Uh, the baddies turn. This one. Oh, wrong button. Ah, <laughs> they all domino. So they all stand back up. Um, and. This one um, here, you see, it begins to get taller as its legs move back into position and it clicks itself back together. Uh, and it will swing at Rex. Oh, hang on, that didn't work. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, 23? 23 hits. Okay. Uh, a 6 damage to Rex. And not enough to hit Roosh. And let's see if this uh, Three Stooges routine continue. Five Stooges. Oh, stands up. Stands up. Uh. Stands up. <laughs> oh. Hey! <laughs> they, all went, they, maintain, they all maintain their footing for this round. They've Mix, been practicing. Yes, mixed grease is... Um, <laughs> It's, um... Grown thin. Grown thin. Thank you, that's what I was looking for. Uh, Nissa, you're up. Um. Well, she's already seen that the, uh, non-magical damage isn't doing anything. Mm-hmm. Well, at least very little, anyway. I'm going to do what I did with the other battle and um, start tying a cloth around the end of my arrow. Okay, go for it. And that's my full action. Alright, no worries. Mick. Bang bang? Yeah. Um... Going to do your smite again? or? Yeah, I'll do All right. that. So Mick what? charges up his gun and fires. No, roll your de attack first. Alright, so the first one is an 8, that misses, roll your attack again. 15, that one hits, uh, roll your damage. That's 
three plus uh, is she cast plus two has Mick cast searing smite branding smite branding smite okay is that different to searing smite most not sure uh because searing smite is concentration for a minute oh no it's like grease, it's a... grease isn't concentration but it's also this one's also it's a, a bonus action when before you make an attack. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Doing uh, which one we were targeting, by the way? Um, whatever is in front of me, like but that one. The one that's the one that the uh, that's um. Uh, Rex has been hacking ever living crap out of. All right. Cool. It take you see chunks of uh, this creature shatter off it as mixed bullets impact into it and as they fly off they actually disintegrate it's taking a lot mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> alright um, Rex back to you mate my weapon is glowing I hit harder <laughs> yep oh, well I mean that works either way so 16 to hit regardless yeah yeah you're good Oh boy, numbers. Um, so 9 plus 4 is 13, plus 4 is 17, plus 2 is 19, nice. plus 10 is 29. 29? Uh, but well, hang on, of hold. which only 4 of four of that is fire. Fire? Uh, but it's all magical, correct? Yes. All oh, right. is it a magical weapon now? It is now. It is a magical weapon now. So plus one, add another one damage. All right, so as <laughs> as you. this weapon glows and you start swinging, it just cleaves straight through this creature. You cut it completely in half. And then, <laughs> and then the, <laughs> the, the, the flames just <sighs> sear I will, it away. I will use my, uh, my second attack mm -hmm. to attack the next one. Yeah, go for Actually, it. Actually, no, wait. I'm going to use my bonus action mm -hmm. to make my other attack now. Yeah, because you get that special one if you kill a creature, don't you? Uh, plus 2 to hit is an 8. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, no, that's a 15 there, so 17. It hits. Uh, so I think that's like 1 less than before. Because I rolled a 9 before and I rolled a 3 instead of a 4 this time. So 29 points 29. of damage, of which 3 is fire. Nice. Um, very nice. You cleave this one's arm completely off. It hits the ground and disintegrates away. Is it still there? No, the arm burns away when it hits the. No, ground. no, no. Is it still there? Oh, it is still there. Yes, yes. Then I make my second attack. Go for it. Thirteen to hit. That will hit. Uh. Oh god, so 10, 20, 23, 27, 29. 29. 30. 30. Don't nice. forget that plus one. It's very that important. plus one, yeah. <laughs> so 30 of which three is fine. Nice. Very, very nice. Uh... And I'm just like waving this battle axe around. <laughs> <laughs> With flames shooting off it. Like, what have Rush. I done? <laughs> Roosh, you're up. Uh, I'm slightly, slightly concerned about this raging bubble next to me. Um, I'm just like yelling, I'm the strongest! <laughs> <sighs> You're welcome. Um, let's go with just a long sword attack okay. and poke it in the hurdy bits. So zooming in is not what I want. Roll. Uh, that's a hit, and I need a d10. Seven piercing damage. Not magical. Magical, magical piercing. It damage. is magical. Awesome. Yeah, I uh, am a magic longsword. Ah yes. Um. Yep. Yeah. Cool. 
I'm already concentrating, so I can't cast Searing Smite, so we're doing that. All right. Now, moving through the spikes, that does damage, correct? 2d4 damage, yep, for every five foot. No worries. Uh, Is it magical damage as well? Just so I know. Uh, As far as I know, it's just piercing. All right, cool. So, uh, roll your damage. Ah! Spiky, spiky, spiky. for that one. All right, thank you. And this guy is going to attempt... He's going to step into the grease, so... We'll see if he falls. Ah, oh, damn it. See if he falls. <laughs> fall, no, I hit the F button, not the roll. Yeah. So this guy <laughs> falls on his ass as he goes. Whoop, twish, also then, takes three piercing. Cool. Thank you very much. Um, all right. So this one here, because it took the fire damage, has. You actually see it sort of flailing to try and get away from the, the flames. So it has disadvantage on this attack against you, Roosh. Cool. Uh, yeah. Right, say no to that. Misses both the uh, like the disadvantage regardless, and the one that has just stepped up to you, uh, Rex, will swing at you. It has advantage. Advantage. So uh, twenty-one or uh, twenty-two. Yeah, that hits. All right, cool. Uh, Sixteen. Uh, bludgeoning damage as his fist comes crashing down upon your head. I just sort of, like, keep laughing as I'm swinging. Yeah, he goes, ah! <laughs> uh, okay, and the one... Ah, damn it, wrong button again. One in front of you, does it stand up? Uh, nope, it's fallen over. Fallen over. Fallen over, they're all on the ground! <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop! <laughs> oh, yes! <yeah. laughs> Nissa, you're up. I'm going to fire the flaming arrow at the closest one. All right, Rolf. Uh, you get disadvantage on this one because it's up there now prone. Uh, Fifteen. Double hit. Plus whatever. Um, that's six piercing. Would that be added anything with the fire? Uh, just add a d4 to that. Does the grease catch on fire? No! Uh, with my modifier, it's 13 total. 13 total. How much fire damage was it, though? Uh, four fire damage. Cool, thank you. Just need to make, because that's a, a separate thing. So yeah, nine piercing and four fire. No worries. <sighs> oh, I forgot to do a thing. Hang on. Uh... Don't you hate it when you forget to do the thing? I didn't forget to do a thing. It's just for the... I need a d6. Oh, and I still have another arrow as well. Yeah, far away if you want to do that one. I'll let you have this one flaming as well, because you spent your whole turn doing it, so I imagine you'd be able to ignite two hours. Uh, well, that's like a ten hit, sir. So. Yeah, that hits. That's four piercing. And four fire. Four fire. You're doing good with your D4s there. Alright. Uh, Mick, you're up. Um, I just the arc, Yeah, yeah, you got your, your smite, yeah. So shot. Yep, 22 will hit. Roll your damage. Plus... Uh, 13, so 26. Uh, and that was it. The one straight across from you? Yeah. Alright, so the one that's laying on the ground in front of... Um, Rex 
Uh, what was it? 26 or so. so. See more chunks of his body just flying off and burning it as Mix rage as he is engulfing it with his magic powers. Uh, yeah, second attack. Yeah, go for it. Fourteen will hit. Yeah. Eight. Uh, Fifteen for the second attack. All right. Both the ones up front are looking very badly hurt. Uh, okay. Uh, Rex, you're up. Chop, chop. Chop, chop! <laughs> 13 to hit. That will hit. Uh, so... Um, 11, 12... So hang on, 11, 12, 13, 23, stop counting. plus, four, plus it, 4 points of yeah, damage. Just stop, you've, you've killed it. So, <laughs> so again, the one on the ground is cleaved in two as you keep your swing. I just like yell, fear the power! And I guess my bonus <laughs> action to do the next one. Yep, go for it. Oh no! I don't think a four's gonna hit. No, a four will not hit, unfortunately. Wow, look at that! Basically, your axe is ah, 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 stuck in the in the in the goal of it. You killed it. We still get your regular, use... your regular right, second attack. Yeah, that was that was the bonus action one. Yeah. So now I'm gonna do the second act. Go for it. Uh, so yeah, that's more. More oh, cool. So sixteen to hit. Yeah. Uh, then nine. Uh, 9, 11, 21 with two points. All including right. two points and of fire. You, you cleave this one as well. And I run. I, well, I move forward. <laughs> Alright, so you'll be taking 2d4 damage from Nissa's brambles. So roll your damage, Jump. Nissa. You take six damage. And then roll a dex check because you're in the grease. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tim, can you see where my other d4 went? Uh, probably in... Yeah, there it is there. Thank you. Dexterity saving throw? Yeah. What's the number? I'm just checking. Mm -hmm. Advantage on deck saving throws against effects that you can see while not blinded, deafened, or incapacitated. Yeah, you get advantage on that one, yeah, go for it. Uh, so saving throws plus 15? Yep, yeah, you're good. It's a little bit, yeah, you sort of. Uh, yeah, your legs start to slide. You sort of slide in, but one of the spikes sticks into your foot and stops you from falling over. So. <laughs> Lucky? Hmm. Roosh, you're up. <sighs> um, well, I would like the prone one in front of me mm -hmm. to make a dexterity saving throw, please. Okay. Uh, 13 or 13. <laughs> well, screw you. <laughs> my DC is 13. <laughs> I need to put more wisdom in my stuff. Yes. Yeah, it does have a dex of minus one, so. <laughs> rolled two 14s. I rolled two 14s. I'm supposed to be that bad. Um. <laughs> I'm just gonna look intimidating. Okay. Uh, 
whoop, whoop, they both stand up. Uh, this one is going to take a step, so roll your damage there, uh, Nissa. Uh, now you haven't actually hit this one yet, have you, Rex? I don't think anyone no. hit it. No. Okay, cool. That's uh, five damage. No worries. But this is the one that you... No, Mick hit this one, I think, from a distance. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because right, cool. it was the only one standing. That was the only one standing at the time. I was trying to remember which one it was. All right, so it goes five, uh, ten. It goes, walks past all of you, so you get opportunity attacks if you wish to make them. Oh, yes. Ooh, yeah. Is it engraved? Oh, sorry, it's only going to be um rex sorry it's still in uh, your wait radius. did that just move forward more Another it did 10. it did yes i'm sad uh, please give it another 11 damage thank you well i mean because i can't use anything it's like 26 to hit that still hits yeah. <laughs> um it's like oh so plus... it's, i mean it's only 26 it's, it's a bit of a shame really. well no because it actually ends up at a higher uh ac check. i know i know when you do your negatives i know um <laughs> so plus five is 14 plus four fire damage so 18 including fire 18 including fire cool Because it took the fire damage, it is now a disadvantage against Mick. <laughs> uh, seven, uh, uh, 20 to hit. Oh, 18. Uh, you can activate your shield if you want to, to deflect that. Yes. All right, so Mick activates his shield and the golem's attack misses him. Uh, and then this one here... Uh, won't do anything. It'll just, uh, it'll actually takes a step to there, takes a step to there, and then takes a step to there. What? They're running away? And this one will attack Nissa. After it takes 14 damage. Thank you. Them thorns working overtime. Yeah, just don't move. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Seventeen to hit. That is exactly my AC, and the thorns disappear. Okay, okay. What did you get for your constitution? Well, you take uh, sixteen points of bludgeoning damage. Yeah, but what did what did Nissa get for a constitution save? I'm not sure. I did was you... doing a con save. Well, well, yeah, one, if it's one, concentration. Oh no no, the thorns go away after. Do they go away after a certain amount of damage, or did you just drop? Them? Um, the thorns is a con is a concentration save. Right, oh, sorry, so, concentration. Yeah. So you you roll you roll a, a check. It has to, a, a constitution saving throw that has to be um, greater than ten or ten. Uh, no, well, no, it's ten. It's ten plus half the damage, so. Be... I fail ten anyway. Or half. It's ten or half, not ten plus. Yeah. Whichever. Well, is no, higher. it's. I, I it's, no, it's, it's half eight. the damage or ten, whichever is higher. Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah. All right. So yeah. And then so I fail. You fail. Yeah. So as it punches you, you lose your concentration, and, and the thorns retract back into the walls. Uh, hey, it is chasing me. All right. Uh, Mick. I just realised that. Yes. Alright, are you gonna punch? Or... Oh, is it next to Well, you got. Yeah, they came right up to you. Oh, I'll do that then. I'll just punch him. Punch it? Alright, punch away. So roll your unarmed strike. Yeah, power call. Uh, oh, hang on. Where is the. I thought I had a button for unarmed strike in here. Oh, it's right in. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah. So you punch that one for 12 for the first one, and the second punch 
many damage. Uh, 12 and 16, so 28 points of face damage. All right. Doesn't like that at all. Uh, Rex, you're back. I ran mm-hmm. all of five feet towards them. Feet, yep. <laughs> and you get advantage because you are flanking with Mick. Yep. I'm going to attack that one there. Oh! Oh. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, that's a natural 20. Oh, yay! So. All of the damage. 10, 20, 27, 32, <laughs> 36 points of damage, including fire. Nice. Uh... Don't forget your plus one. That was including the plus one. Just checking. Yeah. You essentially leap up with your axe and you cleave and you you um, almost you basically bisect its shoulder and nearly cut it in half, but it's still standing. Well, then I do that again <laughs> to make sure it does cut in half. Sixteen to hit. That will hit. Uh, so eighteen. Sorry, eight. Eighteen. Uh. 22, there you go. 27 points. Yeah, so just... Yeah, you, you pull back with the axe and you dig it in and it just cuts it right in half. Ah! I thought I'm going to do the same thing. <laughs> no advantage on this one. Oh, that was so close to being another 20. <laughs> That's a seven, though. Uh, seven is not enough, unfortunately. <laughs> Disappointing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Roosh, you're up. I'm going to turn around. Well, it's apparently there behind me. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to whack it. Whack away. Advantage. Flanking. Woohoo. Uh, let's go with... T- I love listening well, to the Wilhelm. Sorry, how much was that, Rush? I needed to open my thing again. Um, that's not the screen I wanted. That is a 12. 12 will hit. Roll for damage. Uh, 9 piercing slashing magical. Magical, magical slashing. Thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. What were you uh, What were you saying, uh, Rex? You love listening. I wrote to it down. Where is it? On the on the table. Oh. Got to zoom out and find it. I love hearing the Wilhelm scream in the music. <laughs> All right. Uh, this guy is. Um, Surrounded by baddies, but you will continue to. Uh... Not the word I would have used, but okay. Sorry, what? <laughs> Not the word I would have used, but okay. Yeah. Where are uh, the goodies? Well, the person that last hit it was you, so it will attack you. Uh, Roosh. Can try. It will definitely do so. 19. Nope. Nope. So- Ugh. Uh, Nissa, you're up. Uh, I'm gonna pull out my fork in sword configuration because mm-hmm. it's silvered mm-hmm. and it's now in range. Very good. Is she going to fork it? You stole my joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 17 to hit. That will hit. Roll for damage. Eight damage. Nice. That's and silvered, then second yes. hit. Yeah. Yeah, that's silvered, and yep. then the second cool. swing. Cool. 
Another 17 to hit. Nice. And 8 damage. Very good. Uh, you, you slash into it with your sword, but you see as soon as the, the cuts are made, they just seal back up. Uh, Mick, you're up. Uh, punch, punch. punch. Eighteen will hit. Roll your damage. Sixteen. Yep. Yeah. Uh, next attack. Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen will hit. Roll your damage. Nineteen. Nineteen. Nice. All right. Mick barrels into this thing with his power claw. Ripping huge swaths of flesh from its body. Rex, you're up. Time to smash! 16 to hit. That will hit. Uh, 8, 18, 19 points. 19. Of damage, including one fire. Mm hmm. And if it's still standing. It's still standing. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I'll I'll tell you when it's dead. You keep rolling. <laughs> uh, Twenty-one to hit. That will hit. Oh, I'm the one on that. So six. Uh, sorry, one, six, sixteen, uh, and eighteen, including two fire. Eighteen, including two fire. <laughs> You think if you had have done two more points of damage, you would have killed it. <laughs> so... <laughs> My will says that I did! <laughs> Roosh, it's back to you. Stab, stab. Stab, stab, stab away. There you go. So, you... Yeah, I'm not even going to worry about the damage. <laughs> it's only that was a natural 20, so yeah. 10 plus. <laughs> <laughs> so as you... Well, describe your killing blow. You, you tell me how you kill it. Um, taking the longsword in both hands uh, and mimicking, uh, slightly showing off, a vertical slash from bottom to top. Nice. Dismembering this thing. So you sli slice the blade up and it just disintegrates into its... Uh, constituent parts and then the parts just begin to sizzle and it just they all melt away and disappear. So what were you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> I was asking what number on the door didn't fit with the other numbers. I bring my axe down to bear on where this thing was. Mm -hmm. Just be like, ah, <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> yeah, and this is going to walk up and smack him in the head. Ooh. Um, nine. Why? Because if we'd said nine, they wouldn't have attacked and the rest would have helped us. Why didn't you say that? <laughs> I had 60 seconds and you weren't being helpful and coming in to help. I was trying to figure out what the door said. I didn't know that you were screaming at me, wanting things from me. I was trying to concentrate. Uh, mm, um, Rex, I'm very sorry, but I just got a nat 20 to hit you. <laughs> okay, it's a good thing I'm s Yeah, roll yeah. your damage. While well, you're doing an unarmed strike. Well, my damage is technically one. <laughs> yeah, so it just does two, so it does one damage because you're still in a rage, yeah? Yep. But she just like literally just comes up and smacks yeah, you. Yeah, just whacks face. you on the back of the head. So, <laughs> the battle axe swings around but misses. <laughs> guys, guys, guys! Don't um, be each other. Yeah, Nissa has a very dark look on her face right now. <laughs> just say, Nissa, you look like you need a timeout. Go, go have her sit down or something. Um, she's gonna storm back into the room now. Alright. Uh, make a... Uh, yeah, <laughs> make a dexterity saving throw. Ooh. 
that's like twenty-two. Okay, you're fine. So you you step in there, you sl- you slip a few times, but then you you still rage steady yourself and manage to get into the room. Six seconds pass, and I'm like, ah, 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 ah. Um, and, and considering that she started in the middle of everyone, I think it's fairly obvious they would have noticed that she's in a very bad mood right now. Mm-hmm. And That's it doesn't why seem I told you to have to a time out. That doesn't <laughs> seem related to the zombies. Her mood has been getting darker as they've gone into this area. Have a time out. Mick, are you gonna clean up the grease now? It should go away. You can just spell it. Spell no, it. you can't. Oh, you can't just spell it? No, it's, it's there for ten minutes. Oh, okay, right. No, it's a minute. One minute. Oh, it's only one minute. Yeah. Oops, we've been doing it wrong. Uh... Regardless. So, you guys can just wait if you like, because... We're gonna give Nissa some time to cool down in yes. that room. In the uh, room. You know, Nissa's gonna keep going. Alright, so Nissa keeps moving while you guys are... Uh, as you open... Com- as you complimenting open this... Rex on his fighting. Yeah. As you open this door, uh, you the sound of the whoosh is uh, a lot louder, and you also get hit with a wave of heat. It's the other side of this door is a lot warmer than the previous one. Did you see my axe? I swung it so hard it burst in the flame! Um, did you get my message, Tim, by the way? Uh, which one? The one, the photo. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got it. I saw it. I get it. Alright, well hang on. Did come you back. see? Come back, come back, come back, Nissa. Come back. Alright. So a short flight of stairs leads up to a dry corridor. Uh, around the corner is a turnstile. That's what this thing is. Uh she's just gonna stop and glare at it. Okay. I didn't know I think it I didn't know I could make my axe do that. Uh, I did that. But it was my axe, and it did it! Yeah, but I made it hot. No, 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 I swung it so fast it went hot! Look, I can make it not hot, and prove to you I made it hot, by taking the hot away, or you can believe me, and you can have it hot still. (laughs) Um... Good. Uh, that should be enough time. Um, I'm glad we've all decided to be friends. Let's carefully follow Nissa and make sure she's okay. Because even if she is grumpy, she's still our friend. Do I see anything in this room? Uh, no, the room is, uh, it still has, like, it's partially damp, um, in that room, but the water is still draining away, and you see, um, there are cobwebs, uh, in the corners of the room, but where the golems were situated, it's now, like, completely cleared away. Then I guess you keep moving. Mm Mm-hmm. So as you as you get to the stairs, you notice that the stairs are pretty much completely dry from this point onwards. But it is um, a lot warmer past this door as you get up to, get up to this bit here, and then you see Nissa glaring angrily at a um, what looks like a strange rotating door which isn't moving. Have you tried hitting it? Uh, Nissa's not saying anything. She's just in a bad mood. Mm-hmm. What did you find, Nissa? What can we help with? Yeah, uh, points at the turnstile. Have you touched it? No. Okay. 
I poke it with my sword and give it a push. You give it a push with your sword, and it's uh, which which way do you push it? By the way, is the question. I push it in the left hand direction because everything really should turn to the left because that's the way the world works. So clockwise or counterclockwise? So basically, top or bottom? Yeah. Are you going, are you going top path or bottom path? Top path. Top path. Okay. Uh, right. So you push, and the there and just goes, and you hear the like it, it moves forward. It goes, it squeaks and goes, click, and stops. So now th this door here is partially. So you're like here, pushing on the door. Uh, and then this part moves around um, and then clicks. It hasn't, hasn't boxed you in, but you still can't get through the other side. Well, I wasn't going to step into it. I was just going to see what happened when it moved. Well, so you have to be close enough to push, is what I'm saying, because you're not big. Right. Yeah. I hate it when I have blunt pins. Um... Uh, we'll push a little bit harder mm -hmm. in the way that I was going. Okay. So you push it one more time, and this bit here basically seals you in, and now you're just seeing the wall in front of you. So you can't see out one way or the other. Oh, so it's, like, floor-to-ceiling height? Yes. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, it's a revolving door. I will push again. Okay. You keep pushing, it goes click, 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 click and you spit out the other side. Hey, you can come through the way I came through. So, push, click, 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 and you make it through. Mick, you coming through? Yeah. Yeah. Mick pushes, click, 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 click. He has to breathe in a bit to fit through, but he manages it. And as does Rex. And the heat continues to build as you get through the turnstile. Oh, I think we're getting to the real forge part now. This is what a forge should feel like. <laughs> What's a forge? Where they make metal weapons. Mick, you it's would know that as a, as a, as a right? workshop. Yeah. Do you think the dwarves had any alcohol down here? Uh... Probably. Do you think there's any left after the orcs came through? Probably not. The alcohol would be upstairs in the living areas, not down here. In Do the you really think the orcs cult. would have made it down here if those things were there? Because if they had, they wouldn't be intact anymore. What I mean is, I don't think they store alcohol in the area where they have trapped for their special weapons. That's too much effort. Uh, and this is scales again. What did I say? Alright, the corridor moves on and turns right. Rex makes the first move. That's because I am pinning. I am walking up behind Rex. Alright. My hands are busy. Uh, the corridor terminates at a small door at the end of the corridor. Alright, now... If I was a betting woman, which I'm not, I would say that there's a beast in a boiling bubble behind this door. What's a boiling bubble? Something that's very hot and wet. But I think there might be something for us to smash next door, Rex, so let's have a breath. I, I didn't mean to roll my character. Yeah, it's all right. It's all good. This is just part of her attitude at the moment. She's just... Ah, 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 ah. So... Let's the take a breath no alcohol. Of course she's upset. Yeah. Sorry, what was that, Rouge? We'll take a breath. And then we will prepare to go inside the hot room. Ow. All right. They should call it a sauna. Hmm. It fe it's very much feeling like that as you guys are approaching this door. Alright. Uh, do you wish to enter the uh, open the door? Or inspect the door? 
Everyone ready to go inside. Whatever. Yeah. I'll take that as a yes. Right. Um, I will check the door for traps. And investigation, please. That is a sensible thing that one should do mm -hmm. when one is going into dangerous places. It is true. That is a 23. 23. You inspect the door. It does not appear to be trapped, nor does it appear to be locked. Uh, but it is made of metal, and as you touch it, it is very warm to the touch. Ah, that makes sense. Prepare to be warmed up, boys and girls, and green people without really a sex. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What's a boy? That's what I thought. Yeah, Nick knows what the boys are. <laughs> um, and I shall kick the door with my foot because that's not going to hurt my fingers. Okay, you kick the door and it swings open. All right. Ah, oh, man. The door opens onto a stone platform with a large, uh, in a large natural cave. Opposite the entrance in the distance is another stone platform. Between them is a series of wooden discs suspended from the ceiling by massive steel chains. The cave floor seems to be covered by a pool of boiling mud. And as you step into the room, you see onto the other side of the room, you hear <laughs> and one and a massive plume of steam and mud shoots up and covers one of the platforms. And that is not what I expected. And is where we will leave this session until next time. So thank you all for playing, and we will see you in the next D&D Blender, where the group attempts to cross the geysers and chains. Bye!